Thank you, Patrick, and welcome everybody. So this is an exciting day this year for us, not two days. Um, so welcome both the Catalyze investigators. We have many of the Catalyze program staff from NHLBI here and some of the other uh, interested parties from the NIH joining. So um, I thought we would kick off with a little bit of a kind of overview of the program to remind some of the new awardees who are joining just were funded last week. So this is the first time they're introduced to our program. Um, so I'm gonna walk through a little bit of what the program's about, some of our metrics that, or successes we've had, and then um, go over what we're gonna try to do today as a, as a team here uh, in the annual meeting. So next slide, please. Right, so what makes Catalyze unique, in my opinion, and I think for the NHLBI, is that this is the first time we've developed this framework of translational support for kind of early product development and early preclinical projects. Um, those who have gone through the kickoff meeting have, are familiar with the slide, but generally we're, we're supporting this wide array of technology across the Heart, Lung, Blood, Sleep Institute or, or, or therapeutic area, um, and supporting everything from early product definition coming out of an R01 all the way up to that last killer study to get FDA approval to begin clinical trials. Um, and as you will know, if you've been in the program for a while, this is very focused on you, the investigators, to succeed. So working with our Catalyze Coordinating Center partners, we have this very uh, targeted support for you, the investigator. And as you know, they become an extension of your team. And then, as you also know, we like to learn from you all to make sure that the program is always staying fresh and pivoting to um, take the lessons we've, we're learning over time, but then also address any new needs that you all have. So uh, as you know, Marissa and the team will ask you frequently, hey, how are things going? What are your interests? Um, and then we kind of adjust accordingly. And one of those areas is in development of this annual meeting. So after the meeting, we'll be asking you how it went, what you liked, what you didn't, and then we'll use that information to develop next year's meeting. Uh, next slide. And just to remind you um, of all the things we do support. So on the rows across so the different technology types, so therapeutics, uh, device diagnostics, and new and emerging platform technologies, um, the majority of you are on the left side of the product definition, the grant funding uh, part of the program, with some of you successfully graduating to the preclinical side. Others of you um, had later stage technologies and came in for the preclinical support. Um, uh, so we have this wide array of technology maturity on this call. So um, a lot of the, uh, the program today is to address that kind of broader range of technology maturity. Next slide. All right, so we ask you for milestones every time we meet with you every quarter. So I thought I'd share some of our milestones we've we've had over the last uh, four years. So next slide, please, Patrick. Um, so we launched in 2020. We we funded our first cohort about this time of year in 2020. Um, and now we're up to cohort number 10. So that's a lot of success, a lot of lessons learned, um, and 500 plus meetings that we've all been in, um, the coordinating center and myself. Um, and then in 2023, we launched the preclinical program and we are now just funded our third cycle and about to open the doors for our uh, fourth cycle and as Marissa mentioned this is the fourth annual meeting they've all been virtual and this platform of virtual seems to allow the most number of uh, individuals to attend so it's probably a format we'll keep um, but we may be reaching out to you to figure out if there's a, if there's any value in having you all come to the D.C. area for um, either engaging with program officers, engaging with the Catalyze Coordinating Center staff. Um, so that's maybe another tweak we might or offering we may have uh, for next year. Uh, next slide. Right. So in summary, you know, over the 10 cohorts, 66 investigators for the product definition program, we have now funded or supporting 15 in the preclinical services. And six of those 15 are actually graduates or transitioned from the product definition side and are now, we're still helping them maintain that accelerated uh, uh, technology development toward the FDA clearance uh, milestone. All right, so we have, I think, 11 new investigators who were just funded in the last two weeks. So I thought we would just welcome them. Uh, so apologies for, um, Mispronouncing names, but Fagali, Dr. Fagali Boswick, Dr. Seba, Dr. Kella, Dr. Lin, welcome. Next slide. And we have Dr. Yao Tumarkin, who I think is on rounds, but thank you for perhaps joining in. 
Uh, Dr. Tiparaju and Dr. Weiss, welcome to you all. And then we have, I think, three new preclinical projects coming in. So next slide, please. And also Dr. Holtzman, Dr. Sorcher, and Dr. Strange um, were just uh, notified within the last few weeks that they have received preclinical support. So welcome to you all. I hope you enjoy this first introduction to Catalyze. And we would love your feedback since you're the freshest faces for our program. So again, uh, we'll be following up to see how things went for you all. All right, so as I mentioned, this is a, a new approach for the NHLBI to provide this national program and framework of support across the whole institute, regardless of technology type or disease indication. So on the left, we're showing that we are growing the map, if you will. So we, we continually are doing a lot of outreach and try to promote the program to receive applications from the broadest geographic and institutional diversity as possible. And then on the right, we are supporting, you know, again, this broader map of, of investigators. Um, yes, still kind of skewing toward the coast, but we're, we're doing our best to kind of expand that kind of support across the rest of the country. Next slide. And if we look at our portfolio, it's also very diverse um, based on institution type on the left. So yes, mainly academic institutions, but we're also attracting small businesses research hospitals and nonprofit institutions to the program. In the center, we try to keep this nice balance of different technology types coming in. So, you know, yes, half, more or less half medical device diagnostics and or therapeutics, but we also have a few combination products coming in as well. And then programmatically on the right, um, a nice balance across the heart, lung, blood divisions and the National Center for Sleep Research and Disorders. It says one, but we actually have several combination products that have a sleep component to them. So again, trying to support as many different um, areas of the Institute as possible through this program to accelerate technologies for, for their portfolios. Next slide. Um, so again, we ask you at the beginning, what, what's your experience with product definition and product development? And this helps us curate and develop uh, res resources for you. So the majority of our teams are coming in with at least some experience in the space. So that helps us better understand we don't have to go through some of the basics. But then if you look down to the bottom right, um, you know, very few have received follow-on funding or prior support through other commercialization programs. So we always have an eye toward, you know, where you need the support. And that's kind of uh, the second part of what's your motivation. So next slide, please. So based on these standardized questions, we ask you at the intake, what are your motivations? What are you interested in? Um, our, Skills development team has developed resources and uh, new and, and uh, frequent webinars based on these topics. So if we go to the website in the bottom right there, there's resources for any number of commercialization uh, areas that you may be interested in. On the upper right, we, uh, as I mentioned, we have frequent webinars. And then the, the kind of bingo board you're seeing there is something the Innovation Advisors is, is starting to pilot and, and launch. And this is a commercialized re commercialization readiness tool to help you understand where you are along both technology, but then also the business readiness um, called iCanvas. So if you're interested in learning more about any of these resources, reach out to us and we'd be happy to walk you through them. Next slide. All right, so this is a partnership, of course, between the NHLBI and RTI, who are the uh, coordinating center. Um, and as a reminder of the amazing team they have and the resources available, next slide, Patrick. Um, you know, they have this full stable, if you will, of amazing individuals with very diverse expertise across medicinal chemistry, therapeutics, uh, engineers, biomedical uh, prototype development, um, the regulatory affairs team, of course, many of you have interacted with, as well as the innovation advisors and the commercialization support. And this, of course, is one of the Components or offerings for the skills development to help us all um, learn and be more effective at commercialization and product development. Um, and the next slide, I think, is uh, more detailed. We'll share this with you, but a really amazing team across the full spectrum of support for you all. Um, and they maintain quite a bit of staff members for some of the specialized uh, needs that you have as well. Um, so I won't read all this, but again, very amazing team. Great to work with, and hopefully, you all feel the same. Next slide. Um, and just some of our 
early metrics, you know, we're in the fourth year, so we're starting to get some success stories coming out. So quite a few follow on grants, um, eight small business awards, two very major DOD awards, but then additional follow on funding from the private sector. Um, I think commercialization, we're getting some good signals that our support is being productive. So several patents issued or uh, submitted. Um, many publications and some some prizes and special recognition. And I think, you know, in the next session, you'll hear some of the successes of some of the regulatory uh, support that's been received through Catalyze. So we've had two pre-INDs, I believe this last quarter, um, with more to come in this next quarter as well. So again, some, some promising metrics coming out of the program over the first four years, and I hope we can continue that trajectory as we grow. Um, and last slide before we get into today's agenda. So just a reminder, both for your own benefit, but then also to help spread the word. So our next grant funding product definition deadline is in November. We're about to open the doors for our expression of interest form for the preclinical program. Um, that hashtag should be September 27th through, sorry, 23 September through October 4th, I believe it is. Um, but more to come on that. Um, and just to avoid any confusion, if you're already funded or have support from the Catalyze program, you should not submit an expression of interest form. You should connect with your technical lead or myself to indicate that you're interested and we'll help you um, uh, manage that part. And then it, as a reminder, uh, this year we're now offering uh, support for gene and cell therapy. And this includes farm talks and clinical grade manufacturing of the, the two main traditional uh, vectors for gene therapy. And then another tweak that we're doing this year is instead of having um, non-catalyze awardees come in once a year or, or twice a year for regulatory support, once we get the platform ready, we'll be opening it up for a rolling basis for all um, stakeholders within the NHLBI uh, community. They'll, they'll be eligible to request the full spectrum of regulatory support from you know, some sort of like gap analysis of here's my data, what, what do you think the FDA will need? All the way up to support for filing and meeting with the FDA for your 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 clearance device or therapeutic. All right, so we uh, next slide, please, Patrick. So it's a one day meeting, and some of the feedback we got from the last two years is that two days kind of you get burnt out. So we're hoping with a shorter meeting, more targeted, that you all will be able to stay more engaged and committed to um, a kind of an open discussion. So. You know, after this, we'll be hearing from some of your peers and some of the successes and challenges that they've observed and received while they've been in the program. Um, so this is really your your opportunity to, to ask questions and learn from them. Um, after that, we'll have some regulatory uh, and CMC technical sessions. And after the break, we'll come back and the innovation advisors will help to develop or help you all walk through a commercialization plan. And if we can go to the next slide. That's followed by a breakout session where you as the teams will go into um, breakout rooms, which may be a little messy because we have 55 teams, but bear with us, we'll, we have it pretty figured out. Um, so you'll be doing some kind of work on your own commercialization plan. And that'll be followed by uh, the entrepreneur's journey. After a break, we'll come back and hear some of the uh, early career research awards um, or their impact or, or contributions to the Catalyze program. Um, then we'll get some more uh, on pricing and reimbursement from Dr. Renee Arnold, who is an entrepreneur resident here at NJBI. And then my favorite part, the pitch competition, which is always a lot of fun, in my opinion, and hopefully you all enjoy too and learn. And that's it. So it's a short and sweet day, fairly long, I guess, but at the same time, better than two days. So I hope we can all uh, stay engaged, ask questions, and um, reach out if you have thoughts or ideas for, for us as well. So with that, I think um, I'm handing it over to Diana for the introduction of the next session. So thank you all for attending.